For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Number eight, Cam Day is the new pitcher for Utah. Righty, he's a freshman out of Leighton, Utah. Went to Leighton High School. He'll pitch for Utah in the top of the seventh inning. Home team on top, 5-1. Due up for BYU, Cowden, Wilk, and Deming here in the top of the seventh inning. BYU with one run on three hits, one error. Utah, five runs, four hits, no errors. And Joshua Cowden making his way out of the dugout. Looking to begin the top of the seventh inning from Smith's Ballpark, home of the Salt Lake Bees. Sounds like, Tuck, we probably should be getting used to the colors here at uh, Smith's Ballpark, the black, white, and yellow. Sounds like the Jazz are going to be making that move towards next season. Next season or this season? Well, the graphics this season, uniforms next season. First pitch to Cowden, misses ball one. One ball, no strikes to Joshua Cowden. Steps back into the batter's box, awaiting the 1-0 pitch from Day. 1-0, in for strike one, one ball and one strike. One ball, one strike pitch, way outside, two and one. You know, Tuck, one thing we have not talked about on the broadcast as of yet, it's the first baseball broadcast that we can talk about BYU eventually joining the Big 12. How about that? Uh, it's, it's so exciting. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot wait for 2023. It's going to be unbelievable. The 2-1 pitch to Cowden. Misses now 3-1. and one. Nice eye by Josh. Uh, be selective here, 3-1. and one. We need base runners. Yeah, no, it's a, it's big time. It's I wish it was sooner, to be honest with you. You hear rumors, oh, it could be 22 or whatever. I mean, it's just... Right now we're planning on the fall of 23. Our season would be the 24 would be our first in the Big 12. 3-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. But we are ecstatic and excited. I actually feel bad for some of the guys on the team here who will never get a chance right, right to play there. But uh, it's going to be fun. And this year, a little uh, schedule insider. You'll have a little bit of a Big 12 team coming to Provo in the middle of March. So that'll be fun to kind of have them come to town before. 3-2 pitch inside, leadoff walk to Josh Cowden. That's how the top of the seventh begins for the Cougars. It's not going to be very long before we get to the regular season towards the, uh, the middle to end of February, and it'll be here before we know it. That's why these games and all of the practices and the scrimmages that BYU gets in the fall. They're so important to be able to utilize those and to just milk them for everything that you can get out of them. Yes, they're really important. First pitch to Jacob Will. You know, a few years ago, strike one. They actually allowed us to play as many games as you wanted to in the fall. You just had to take them off of your spring schedule. So you get 56 games in the spring. Well, if you only want to play 51, then you could play 55 in the fall or or, or two in the fall, or whatever you wanted to do. And, and they took that away from everybody and said, no, you only get two. A one pitch. Wilk lines it into right field. The right fielder, Clement, originally misplayed it, went the wrong way. He's able to correct himself and make the catch for out number one. So Wilk is retired, and that'll bring in the third baseman, Austin Deming. Yeah, good swing right there by Jake. Just hit it right at him. Good play there by Clement. But yeah, going back to that, you used to be able to, you know, choose, and so we could play more junior colleges and things like that to kind of for recruiting and and just to get some more games in. But now, when you only get the two games, we're like, hey, you know, this was before Coach Henderson was at Utah as the head coach. Um, yeah, Coach Kinnenberg, hey, let's just play you guys. You're, you're the the best competition in the state for us, and let's just play twice, home and home, and give ourselves the best look to get ready for the season. So we're going to keep kind of keep that tradition going as long as we can. Yeah, Coach Kinneberg, a staple with Utah baseball, no longer with the program. Yeah, it's sad to see him go. I mean, Gary was hired a few years ago as a pitching coach, and then they, they moved the interim tag and gave him the, the head nod in the summertime. And it'll be interesting to see how he's a pitching coach. 
So it's interesting to see how that changes in the recruiting game and whatnot. Runner at first, one out. The batter, Austin Deming. A check on Cowden at first. He's back safely. One ball, no strike count to Deming. 5-1 Utah here in the top of the seventh inning. Going 12 innings here in Salt Lake City. Day with the 1-0 pitch. Nice job by Deming to check his swing. Ball two. Two and zero to Austin Deming, the Southern Utah native. Day looking over at Cowden at first. The two zero to Deming, and it misses. Three balls and no strikes. Will he be taken here? Cowden at first, after earning a leadoff walk. Jacob Wilk lined out to right. That brings us to this at bat. 3-0 count to Deming. The 3-0 pitch to Austin. Looked like it was inside for ball four, but got the call, so 3-1. and one. You might see Cowden take off here, a little 3-1 hit and run. You can take it for ball four or smash something that's good to hit here if you're Deming. Three balls, one strike, one out. The pitch to Deming. Ball four. Deming will take his base. Cowden running down to second. So BYU in business again. One out. Runners at first and second. Bringing in the left fielder, Hayden Latham. In the fifth inning or excuse me, in the sixth inning, BYU had the opportunity to cut into this lead, had one out, the bases loaded, could not get a run to cross the plate. But now another opportunity, BYU with runners at first and second, and only one out. Hayden with a strikeout in the second, and then a sack fly in the fifth. That would score BYU's only run so far on the scoreboard today. The first pitch to Latham. Outside, ball one. That's the one thing Cam Day, being a true freshman here, is uh, body language, right? He He's throwing some close pitches that uh, the umpire hasn't given him the strike call, and he's wanted it, and he's had to walk around the mound a little bit, take deep breaths, and you can see that it's affecting him. Turned into a couple of walks because of that. The zones in Division I baseball are much different than high school zones, and they just get every level you go, they get better. The pitch hit sharply on a line to center field. Booth makes the catch for out number two. Latham is retired. Oh, that's two lasers we've hit this inning right at outfielders. If they'll just find a gap, you know, it's a different inning. Is, Ryan to put together a big swing right here. As those watching on Facebook right now, I can see the majority, I'd say about 95%, if not higher, of the field is now in the shade. Temperature a little cooler now as we get later in the evening, just after 6 o'clock mountain time. But still not a cloud in the sky. It's been a gorgeous day here along the Wasatch Front. The pitch to Sapiti. Swing and a miss. 91 miles an hour on the pitch from Day. The number nine, one, and two hitters due up for Utah in the bottom of the seventh inning. The 0 1 pitch, another swing and a miss, strike two. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Runners at first and second. Day facing Sapiti. 
Day sets and delivers the 0-2 to Ryan. Fouled off to the right. We'll do it again. Count stays 0-2. If Sapiti can get a base hit, keep the inning alive, on deck, Ozzy Pratt, freshman, will pinch hit. Come on, Rye, find a way right here. He would hit in place of Kyler Lester. But right now, it's all about Sapiti at the plate, awaiting the 0-2 pitch from Day. Day delivers. Sapiti fouls it off to the right again. Ryan out of the Las Vegas area. Steps back into the batter's box and awaits the 0-2 pitch once again. Five one Utah here in the top of the seventh inning. Day sets. Looks back at second base and now delivers the 0-2 outside. One and two now to Sapiti. Runners at first and second, two outs. Needing some two-out magic here to put a couple more runs on the board for the Cougars. Down 5-1. The 1-2 pitch to Sapiti, that boy. and that's a hit, base hit into right field. One run will score, and it's an RBI single for Ryan Sapiti, and it's now 5-2 Utah. Yeah, that's what you have to do right there is just battle. Put balls in play. Good things will happen. Outside fastball. Hit it into right field. Nicely done there, Ryan. BYU now within three. And the same situation. Two outs. Runners at first and second. Utah able to get some things done with two outs. BYU earlier had an opportunity. Couldn't do it so far. Nice start to this seventh inning. Still more work to do. And the batter is Ozzie Pratt. The first pitch to Ozzie. Foul back to the screen. Strike one. Well, Ozzie's been battling. He has off-season surgery this summer. And uh, can't, can't fully throw yet, so he can play defense. And uh, he, can, he finally got cleared to swing about three weeks ago, so he's slowly getting himself back. Good headsy athletic player. What a time to come up for your first at bat, right? Yeah. Misses away. One ball, one strike. And he's a kid that he's going to get bigger and stronger, and he's quick and athletic, plays the game hard. He's a guy that throughout his career can really help this team. And now he's just battling that injury. You know, coming back from an injury, wasn't able to hit for, you know, three or four months. It's all about the process. Two outs. The 1-1 one, one pitch to Pratt. Fouled off to the left. And Ozzie falls behind one and two. Hey, what he has is he has elite bat-to-ball skills. He's really, really good at actually putting the barrel on the ball. It's just now it's just getting that strength so that, that when that ball's put in play, there's some damage. 1-2 count to Pratt. Pratt coming in as a pinch hitter, batting 10th in the order, replacing Kyler Lester. And the one-two pitch hit down the third base line. The third baseman diving head first will make the out. But BYU, they do get one run in the top of the seventh. They trail 5-2 as we stretch from Smith's Ballpark, the seventh inning stretch is brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We'll take a break, come back with the bottom of the seventh next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and your host, Jason Shepard. This BYU pitching change brought to you once again by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. Aiden Callahan on the mound for the BYU Cougars. In to pitch the bottom of the seventh inning. Cougars do score one in the top of the seventh. It's now a three-run lead for Utah, 5-2. to two. Alongside Tuckett Slade, the 
Director of Operations for BYU Baseball. My name is Jason Shepard. We appreciate you tuning in, however you're doing it, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's listening on the BYU Cougars app, or on BYUcougars.com slash live radio. We appreciate you tuning in for some fall baseball between BYU and Utah. If you were tuning in at the beginning of the broadcast, you you heard Coach Littlewood say it doesn't matter what it is. When it's BYU-Utah, it could be, you know, anything. It could be, you know, shuffleboard. doesn't matter. It always means a little something extra when it's uh, blue versus red. Yes, it is. It's definitely that way. I mean, it is the fall. It doesn't matter. But uh, but it does. 1-0 pitch. Lombardi flies one to center field. McIntyre underneath it makes the catch. And Lombardi is retired for out number one in the bottom of the seventh. As we mentioned last season, Utah took three of the four matchups between the two schools. Overall, it was not a good year for the University of Utah. In terms of overall record, they were 17 and 33. Callahan with the pitch in to Richardson for strike one. Richardson with a strikeout, an RBI single, and then flied out to right. The 0-1 pitch outside, ball one, even in the count at one and one. Sun beginning to set in the west. 53 degrees is what it says the temperature is. It certainly feels cooler than that. And the count one and two to Richardson. I say that, though, when we're inside. Mm -hmm. We do have a window open, so we're not, you know, completely out of the elements. Two I balls, two strikes. I did a Facebook Live game. We were in Stockton, California, like five years ago. But it was at this, like, minor league, ex-minor league ballpark, and it was this old, like, cement press box. And it was so cold at night. I was so cold inside that press box. 2-2 two, two pitch. Strike three looking. Callahan with out number two as he strikes out Matt Richardson. And two away here in the bottom of the seventh inning. There's nothing worse than when you're in that press box and the wind's blowing in and you've got no protection. And it's just you're just sitting there just freezing. But uh, that was me that game. Luckily, we won that game, so it made it a little warmer. A little warmer when you win the game. Yeah. Speaking of wind, remember how bad the wind was at New Mexico a couple of seasons ago? No kidding. Swing and a foul out of play. The batter is Alex Beza. All I remember about that trip is the best friend you made from an opposing parent. The, the parents <laughs> did not. First of all, every time uh. I was so loud, they I, I think they actually enjoyed the loud part because they could actually hear a little bit of play-by-play. -play. But when I when I said anything that wasn't positive about <laughs> New Mexico, we, well, always got, we always got the stare. And for those that don't understand this, because it was a few years ago, they wouldn't allow us in the press box. They didn't have enough space for us, so we were out in the stands. Yes, we were in the stands. With the, with the table. So Shep's already the loudest human being ever. Now you put him in the stands with no coverage, no window blocking that sound, and even the center fielder said, I could hear everything Shep was saying the whole entire game. <laughs> and, and Shep You're wasn't, welcome. He wasn't being negative to New Mexico. It's just her, her son, the third baseman, had made a couple of errors. And yes. He pointed out that it changed the game. Mommy didn't like that. Mom didn't like it. <laughs> no balls, two uh, strikes. The 0-2 pitch. Ooh, ooh misses. Pitch. Callahan thought it was strike three, but one ball and two strikes. All I remember is her looking up with the glare of death, and I'm like, <laughs> uh-oh, Shep, I'm going to have to help you walk to the car today. Gonna need, I'm going to need some security to get yeah. out of here. The 1-2 pitch. Again, low, 2-2. Two and two. I actually had a chance uh, during football media day to talk with Jaron Hall about that because I'd mentioned I've yeah. only been able to call one grand slam, and it was his, his in that yep. series. And he's like, oh, my goodness, I cannot believe how cold and windy it was in that game. That's what yep. everybody remembers from that trip. That was miserable. 2-2 two, two pitch. Good Strike pitch. three looking. Callahan comes in and retires the Utes. 1-2-3. Nice job. Heading to the top of the eighth. Cougars down by three. It's 5-2 Utah on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Top of the eighth inning. 5-2 Utah. We believe that the new pitcher is number 14, Dane Baker, a righty, a redshirt junior out of uh, Corona, California. 
previously at Santa Ana Community College. And it is confirmed, number 14. So the new pitcher for Utah. And leading off the top of the eighth for the Cougars is the shortstop, Brock Watkins. Brock with a double in his last plate appearance. Both teams with four hits, but three more runs have scored for Utah. Swing and a miss, strike one to Brock. We're in the top of the eighth inning. Going 12 tonight. Next Saturday's game will also be more than nine innings. Exact number I'm not sure has been officially decided as of yet. Swing and a miss, or excuse me, swing and a foul back to the screen. No balls and two strikes. Again, next Saturday, it's game two of this two-game series. Tonight it's in Salt Lake City. Game two next week is Saturday afternoon at Miller Park. Admission is free. So we'd love to see you out for some baseball, BYU-Utah style. The 0-2 pitch to Brock. Lifted into right field. Clement on his way back, and that will be gone. A solo home run for Brock Watkins, and the Cougars now within two. It's now 5-3 Utah. That ball continued to carry off the bat. I did not think it was going to carry that far, but the right fielder, Clement, was playing shallow and just kept running back, and he realized he had no chance to get that ball, that home run is brought to you by Zion's Bank for banking that helps you game plan for life. Zion's Bank is for you. And BYU, the last two innings have scored a run, a run in the top of the seventh, one so far in the top of the eighth, and now within two runs. And now they've out hit Utah 5 4. First pitch in to Mitch McIntyre is for ball one. Cougars just chipping away. 5-3 is the lead for the home team, Utes. 1-0 pitch, fouled off to the left side. And now one ball and one strike. Dane Baker is the new pitcher, and the first batter he faces is Brock Watkins, who took him deep for a solo home run. It's nice when I step away, Shep, to have to change the food order and a home run gets hit. That's well, maybe you nice. ought to leave then. Yeah, I, I, I did see it. I was <laughs> in the other booth, but oh, I can leave. 1-1 one, one pitch. Ball two. But I think you'd be lonely. Look, you are the one that decided to not join me in the booth uh, when we were at Cal Poly, and that's the one that ended up going 14 innings. Hey, what was I doing that day? I don't remember. Well, no, BYU, BYU was on a winning streak. And so we were just not going to mess with it. Oh, that's right. That Was that the doubleheader day, too? Um, no. No, it was. No, I don't think it was because we wouldn't have done a doubleheader. Yeah. We wouldn't have had a 16-inning. I mean, it wasn't that same day. That was the night, though, that BYU basketball took down number one that Gonzaga was, yeah. at, uh, at the Marriott Center. The 3-1 pitch. And it's ball four. And that is another walk. That is three walks on the evening. For Mitch McIntyre, he has uh, been on base three out of his four plate appearances. He has three walks and then a strikeout. Kind of looks like we're going to get a new umpire. They've been doing a little rotation. Look, it's exhibition time for the umpires too. Absolutely. As it is for announcers, we're trying out a new announcer over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good to have you back, Chef. It is good to be back, my friend. Cole Gamble at the plate. Still nobody out. And a runner at first. The first pitch to Gamble. Misses away. Ball one. I would imagine the lights here at Smith's Ballpark should be uh, clicking on fairly quickly. They're actually on. You just can't tell because the way they're directioned. Well, that's. I think you're right. They are on, though. Well, they're going to be needed very quickly. It's starting to get darker here. As the night progresses. These are a new LED type light, and so they don't shine. They just shine straight down. It's actually going to be the light that we end up getting here in a couple of years. Um, part of our 
there's there's a couple of projects at our park that are going to be happening in the next couple of years. New scoreboard going to be put in before the season starts this year, and right center is going to be awesome. And they have not broken ground on that as of yet, correct? No, but it's going to be done most likely before our first home series. That's the goal. Very nice. Um, but uh, a couple of little hiccups, but they have assured us it's going to get done, and then the light project will be next, and uh, that's going to be really great for our field because uh, it just really helps the players see the ball much better in those – night games well and in terms of we were talking about this with the big 12 obviously everybody knows what type of venue miller park is but to be able to have some of those upgrades for sure. in time for byu entering the big 12 just makes it makes it even more impressive 2-0 pitch in for strike one to cole gamble so two and one to cole cole didn't like it but uh, it's close enough he had to step out a little bit collect himself and now back into the batter's box BYU down by two. At one point, they were down 5-1. Scored a run in the seventh, and now a run in the eighth so far. Looking for more here. 2-1 pitch inside, 3-1 and one to Gamble. You look back at that uh, that sixth inning. That's the one that's like, man, bases loaded, one out. You have Pintar up. You know you're going to score at least one yep. run. But uh, it's baseball. It's tough, you know. Guys strike out. and Back-to-back -back strikeouts, they get out of it. But uh, they've answered nicely back to score two more runs and get right back in this game. And that's what you're looking for. See how you, you come back from adversity. 3-1 pitch. Gamble pops it up. It's in foul territory. And it will fall and hit the ground. There were two players in the vicinity. One of which was the catcher, Graham. Neither able to make the catch. It was Talia and Graham over right near the wall on the Utah dugout, and it fell in between them. So three and two now to Cole Gamble. Runner at first. He is Mitch McIntyre. A walk has him at first. The payoff pitch to Gamble. And it's ball four. McIntyre was on the move. He was looking to steal the bag, but he'll get it anyway. And that's now three walks for Cole Gamble. We mentioned that Mitch McIntyre had three. The number one and number two hitters have each been walked three times. And now Andrew Pintar back up. It's not the bases loaded situation, but he's hitting with nobody out. Runners at first and second. Yeah, but you're now the, the go-ahead run at the plate. Tyan runs now at first here the top of the eighth. I mean, we are playing 12. It's scripted out as 12. But if you think of the nine-inning mindset, right, this is a chance you have to get right in this thing. The first pitch to Pintar. Misses away. One ball, no strikes. Another golden opportunity for BYU. This inning was led off by Brock Watkins hitting a solo home run over the wall in right field. That has pulled BYU within 5-3 here in the top of the eighth. The 1-0 pitch. Ground ball to third. Third baseman steps on the bag, throws over to first. Not in time. I think the throw would have been on time, but the first baseman could not pick it out. So they will get the force out at third. So there's one out, but now still runners at first and second. Colin Reuter, the BYU catcher, now batting with one out and runners at first and second. Colin 0 for 2 with a walk. He struck out and grounded out. The pitch to Reuter, outside, ball one. Dane Baker on the mound for the Utah Utes. And he has slowed down significantly. Gets his sign. Looks back at second. Kicks and delivers the 1-0. And that's a base hit over the head of the shortstop. Runners will be waved in. Cole Gamble scoring from second base, and it is an RBI single for Colin Reuter, his first as a BYU Cougar. Yeah, nicely done right there. Picked up Pintar, able to drive in Gamble. 
Nicely done. Got a slider there, hit it over short. And now BYU within a run. It's now 5-4. And the Cougars increase their hitting lead. They lead in hits 6-4. Josh Cowden at the plate. Same situation as the previous at bat. One out, runners at first and second. Can the Cougars tie this up or take the lead here in the top of the eighth? Cowden with a triple in the ball game already. I think we'd all take a triple right now. A throw down to second, not in time. Pintar back safely. Boy, if you're Colin Ruder, that's got to feel good. Your yeah, first RBI does, yeah. is a BYU Cougar as a freshman. And it was his last at bat scheduled for the game, so going into it. Good speed at second. The first pitch, Cowden pops it up. It will get out of play. Strike one. So no balls, one strike and one out. Ruder at first, Pintar at second. Baker on the mound for Utah. Facing the designated hitter, Josh Cowden. Looks like Cooper Vest is now on deck there, Ship. He'll hit for, I think, Wilk, right? It would be Wilk's spot, yes. The 0-1 pitch. Hit high down the right field line. Clement over to make the catch for out number two. And both runners obviously staying put at first and second. A big out number two for Dane Baker. Got a good pitch to hit there, Josh. Just got under it. Need to stay more line drive plane. And as Tuck mentioned, Cooper Vest. Well, a bat for Jacob Wilk in the number six spot. Vest wearing number seven for the BYU Cougars. Again, the Cougars in the grays trimmed in navy. Utah with the gray pants, but the top, half red, half black. Two outs, runners at first and second. BYU with two runs here in the top of the eighth. They pull within a run. It's 5-4 Utah. The first pitch to Vest, and he looks at strike one. Yeah, good take there. Come in, first pitch. He throws you a slider. Uh, now you've seen it. Pintar at second, Ruder at first. At the plate, Cooper Vest coming in as a pinch hitter for Jacob Wilk. The 0 1 pitch misses away, 1 and 1. BYU trailed 5 to 1 heading in here to the top of the eighth. They have scored two, or excuse me, they trailed 5-2 heading into the top of the eighth and have scored two to pull within 5-4. Had a run in the sixth, a run in the seventh, and so far two in the eighth. Utah has not scored since the fifth inning. And the 1-1 pitch misses 2-1. and one. A good speed at second. Single to the outfield to tie this game up. It's going to take a little something extra for Ruder to score. Catcher speed from, from uh, first base. <laughs> Two balls and one strike. Baker gets his sign. Sets and delivers the 2-1 to Vest. And Cooper pops it up on the infield. It's the shortstop. Richardson calling everyone off. Makes the catch. And that will retire BYU in the top of the eighth. But BYU scores two. They trail by one, 5-4, heading to the bottom of the eighth. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and your host, Jason Shepard. Cooper McKeon, the new pitcher for the BYU Cougars. This BYU pitching change brought to you by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. 
Cooper playing a major role for BYU last year and expected to do the same thing this year. Yeah, absolutely major role last year. And it's the way we kind of scripted the game. We wanted our back end guys to to be in in these situations. And so seventh and eighth inning type guy, Cooper, coming here in the eighth, keeping this game one run with, uh, with Reed to follow. McKeon last year, 24 appearances, 2-1 and one record, an ERA of 5.68, and the first pitch is in for strike one. Just take away the uh, his first full inning as a Coug last year, and his ERA and ball to strike ratio would be even better. That was a tough start he had, but boy, did he finish strong. Johnny Bardich is the pinch hitter. Bounces it right in front of home. Throw down to first base in time, and Bardich is retired for out number one. That's how we begin in the bottom of the eighth. Yeah, a couple other changes out there, too. It looks like uh, Mason Strong is now the catcher. Catching behind the plate, who made that play there. And then it looks like uh, in left field is, uh, I think, Cowden's now in left field. Taking over for Hayden. And Vest is now for Wilk at first, who came in and hit last inning. Some changes here late in the ball game. Again, going 12 innings. We're in the bottom of the eighth. But we are going 12. One out, base is empty. McKeon delivers the 1-0. And it misses now 2-0. The batter is number nine, Layden Fry, a freshman out of Santa Clara, Utah, at Snow Canyon High School. So Landon and Mason were teammates last year. Snow Canyon won a state championship. Wonder if they're even talking to each other right now. <laughs> 2 0. Foul tip, 2 and 1 now. Two balls, one strike, one out. Base is empty. Five four ball game in favor of Utah. Two one pitch. Misses now three and one. Landon Fry facing Cooper McKeon. Three balls, one strike. Cooper delivers high, and it's ball four. So it's a one-out walk to Landon Fry. And that'll bring in the number five hitter, number 50, Zach Talia. Well, for both pitching staffs today, it's the walks, right? Yep. Hasn't been, there's only been 10 hits combined. But uh, it's been the walks. How many total walks? BYU has walked... Four, five, six, six. I'm counting six walks. Yeah, it's too many. Five too many right there. One ball, no strike. The batter again is Zach Talia. Runner at first. That is Landon Fry. Cooper McKeon on the mound for the Cougars here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Coop delivers the 1-0. Strike one, even in the count at one and one. What does Utah have, about six or seven walks as well? Utah has walked, well, <laughs> between Mitch McIntyre and Gamble, they've walked both six of those guys times. six That's times, true. just That's those true. two guys. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten walks for Utah pitchers. One, one pitch, fouled off to the right, one and two. One ball, two strikes. BYU has scored three runs in the last two innings, and they've pulled within a run. It's 5-4 Utah here in the bottom of the eighth. McKeon delivers the 1-2, swing and a miss. Strike three, and out number two. Nice job by McKeon. 
Well, so, you know, Shep, all walks are not created equal, right? It's about what you do after that walk, right? Does it turn into another walk, or does that walk then a home run happen? A walk or a double, right? A walk and then an error. But, you know, you walk the guy. You get the first out on, on your first pitch. Then you walk a guy. But then you strike out the next guy. So now you have two outs running around first. You have yourself a chance to still get out of this inning without giving up a run. The batter is Carter Booth. He has three RBI on the ball game. A single and a two-run home run. And the difference in this game is earlier in the game, we had a walk and then we had an error. Then the error created the, the double play ball that then gave up a run. Then we had a two-out walk, then a home run, right? Those are three runs right there. That's a difference in the game right now. It makes a difference for sure. The 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss, pitched him inside. And Booth swung right through it. Looks like it's uh Yeah, it's not Booth. Graham. It's, it's Britt Graham. I, I'd actually jumped ahead one spot yeah, yeah. in my uh, – Scorecard. So, yes, it is Britt Graham who came in as a pinch hitter for Brock Rudy and then went behind the plate. So, Britt Graham at the plate facing an 0-2 pitch for McKeon. The 0-2 to Graham. Hit into right field, carrying right into the glove of nice Cole job. Gamble. And a nice job from Cooper McKeon. As we head to the top of the ninth inning, BYU down a run, 5-4 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. New right-handed pitcher for the University of Utah out of Oakdale, California, most recently from Sully Community College, number four, Blake Whiting on the mound for Utah as we begin the top of the ninth inning. BYU trailing 5-4. Four runs, six hits, one error for the Cougars. Five runs, four hits, no errors for the University of Utah. And we're going to have a pinch hitter, Jacob Rogers. Will bat. He will bat in place of Austin Deming, batting seventh in the order. So Jacob Rogers out of Vegas will get his first plate appearance of the fall. First pitch is foul back for strike one. Well, at Mason Strong, who came in and to catch last inning, is going to be on deck. He didn't go in at Ruder's spot offensively. Yeah, this late in the ball game with all of the, the switching, you're just basically going to have to kind of have our heads on a swivel a little bit. The 0 1 pitch in for strike two, so no balls, two strikes. A good little breaking ball right there, just caught the edge. The 0 2 pitch. And it misses low, one and two. Jacob Rogers, 6'4", 205. The junior out of Vegas began his collegiate career at UNLV, decided to come to Provo. The one-two pitch. Strike three looking, out number one. Rogers is retired for out number one in the top of the ninth. Well, and just when Rodgers was finally catching his stride last year and had the best game of his career as a Coug at San Diego, you know, he got hit by the pitch in his right hand and broke his thumb. And it's like... Just horrible luck. Like, seriously? Mason Strong at the plate. First pitch he sees, lined sharply to center. And the center fielder, Booth, makes the catch for out number two. Yeah, hit it hard. Just yes, right he at did. Him. Good swing. Got another uh, another hitter here. Max Harper now in the hit. Wearing number 34, Max Harper from Virginia. Patrick Henry Community College, 6'2", 225. And the first pitch to Harper. High and outside, ball one. Big, strong kid from Virginia. He uh, hit 20-plus home runs in junior college last year. So big, powerful, strong kid. Whiting with the 1-0 pitch. Foul back to the screen. Evening the count at 1-1. One and one. It looks like Alex Sardina, Sardina is uh, on deck as well, Chef. You know, one of the things that I, I've really noticed over the last really three – 
probably mostly over the last three years is just the look. BYU has guys that look the part. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just the athletes are getting bigger and stronger. And obviously that, you know, the, the longer that Coach Littlewood and the staff are here, you know, that evolves and you start to build a reputation and you start to win and guys know what they're getting out of the program. And you can just see just even the way the body type of players over the last three or four years, guys are getting bigger and stronger. It's great to see. Yeah, it is. One-two pitch, swing and a miss. Strike three, and the Cougars are retired. No run scoring in the top of the ninth. We head to the bottom of the inning. It's 5-4 Utah on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and your host, Jason Shepard. Reed McLaughlin. The new pitcher for the BYU Cougars. This Cougar pitching change brought to you by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. Reed, not the only change for BYU as we begin the bottom of the ninth inning. Sardina now in at second base. Reber is in right. The previous right fielder, Cole Gamble, has shifted to center field. And Jacob Rogers now at third base. So a couple of defensive changes for the BYU Cougars as we begin the bottom of the ninth with Utah leading 5-4 and the first pitch from Reed swing and a miss strike one and the batter is number 21 Dakota Duffalo the count even now one and one well Reed's our guy he's been our closer our bulldog have a huge role for us again this year. Strike two, one and two. He was a Cape Cod All-Star this summer. Yes, he was. And if you're getting invites to the Cape Cod League, you're a premier prospect. You are a premier prospect. That is the premier summer league for sure. Ground ball to second. Sardina over to first in time. Vest makes the catch. One up, one down in the bottom of the ninth. Going 12 innings tonight from Salt Lake City. Zane Scancy is the pinch hitter, getting his first at bat, wearing number one out of Gig Harbor, Washington, Gig Harbor High School. And he looks to strike one from Reed McLaughlin. The 0-1 pitch. And Reed wasting no time. Strike two. It's one of the things I love about Reed on the mound. His job, he's up there to throw strikes. Yes, he he's is. he's gonna throw strikes. And more times than not, you're not gonna be able to hit them. The 0 2 pitch. Check swing. Ball one. It was a nasty looking pitch. Has a little crossfire, can run it up to about 93. He's usually 90, 91. Pretty good little slider, but he can just locate where he wants, when he wants. The one two pitch. Chopped foul. The count will stay one and two. One ball, two strikes. Ground ball to Sardina. One hops it, gloves, throws over to first, and quickly two up and two down. Nicely done by Sardina, who just checked into the game. Yeah. It's had two balls hit right at him. A new player, and it finds him right there. It always does, doesn't it? So we've got two UNLV transfers now on the infield right now with uh, Sardina and Jacob Rogers. Two outs, base is empty. McLaughlin delivers, and it's strike one. The batter is number 46, Branson Keel. The 0 1 to Keel. Ground ball to first. Vest takes it himself. Three unassisted on the putout. One, two, three go the Utes. We will head to the top of the 10th. Cougars down a run, 5-4 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 